Hello, I'm Frank Clifford and welcome to the Watkins Academy Masterclass on the Astrology of Relating. I've been an astrologer for about 30 years. I run the London School of Astrology and I've published a number of books over the years and written many too. This masterclass will examine the primary astrological indicators that reveal how we love, how we relate and what we really need. We'll be looking at the planets and the signs, as well as the four elements of fire, earth, air and water. So first of all, how can astrology help you? Astrology is a way of understanding your place in the world. Astrologers hear all sorts of questions from clients. What am I here to do? What would be meaningful for me? Will I be happy? These are all questions that astrology can give a perspective on. And then there are other questions like, will I find love? Will I have children? When will I settle down and get married? Well, these are questions best left for the client to answer. Or put another way, these are things the client needs to decide for themselves. Because astrology is not primarily concerned with prediction. Rather than making a forecast of what's going to happen, a good astrologer will tell you your most important traits and talents, your habits, needs and desires, and the type of season that's ahead. And they'll encourage you to make the most of that season. The birth chart is a remarkable tool for self-understanding. Your chart shows the types of energies and patterns that dominate your personality. These can range from the self-destructive and self-defeating to the empowering and self-determining. Your chart can reveal the type of life stories you'll experience and the relationships you'll gravitate towards. Your astrological map, your blueprint, can describe a great deal about you and the world into which you've been born. But there are many external, educational, cultural and social factors that affect how well you express the potential energies in your horoscope and how well you use your chart or choose to take advantage of your talents and fulfill your potential. An astrology reading or a class like this should be a liberating experience and one of self-discovery. It shouldn't leave you feeling at the mercy of the planets or give you the excuse of, well, this is who I am, I can't change it. There's always the opportunity to develop and recreate yourself, to take your talents and needs up a notch and operate at a higher level of consciousness. Astrology is simply one tool to help us understand how we fit into the overall pattern. A good astrologer will encourage the client to be self-determining and actively participate in their own life. In other words, in our own lives, we should always be in the driver's seat. Getting to know ourselves better, our drives, needs, instincts, means we usually make better decisions in the major areas of life. And the key to healthy relationships is having a good understanding of what we need personally, and professionally, and to realize that this is both an inner process of discovery and an outer process of discovery through our relationships with others. There are a few specific things I've learned about relationships as an astrologer and as a partner I'd like to share with you today. Firstly, it's important to have the right people in your life, and it takes time and experience to sidestep the psychic vampires to give up on the people that drain your energy and to say no to the people that take from you in generous amounts but cannot give generously when you need it. And the key to this is that we teach people how to treat us. We set it up from the start. This can be through people pleasing, the fear of being rejected, staying silent, not expressing our own needs, not telling people what we really need or what we really feel or want. 
Again, self-understanding gained through astrology or any other type of insightful tool leads to greater self-esteem and clarity. And both self-esteem and clarity equal power. The power to make better choices and opt out of situations that don't represent the very best of what we want for ourselves. And we need to know how to take care of ourselves before we dare to help take care of other people. We're also taught that we need to compromise in relationships. I would say don't believe that, that's nonsense. First of all, compromise is overrated. No one really gets what they want. Partnerships may require us to accommodate and adapt, but they should never be about compromise or concession. The compromise of our needs and true self will lead to unhappiness and usually to anger at the other person who, quote unquote, made us do it. And it is said that despair is choosing to be someone other than ourselves. So we mustn't sell out in the hope that we'll be content. The phrase settling down is often more about settling for second best than being happy. I've created an acronym for the key aspects of a relationship. Chart first. The first word chart is about some of the ingredients to getting on well and keeping the energy crackling. C is for communication, not just the need to chat things over, but also the importance of expressing intimacy in partnership. H is for humor, the ability to laugh together and see the funny side of life. A is for attraction, desiring and admiring the person you're sitting opposite or lying next to in bed. R is for respect, for personal space, personal needs and personal differences. And T is for thoughtfulness, working on the little things, the surprises and considerate actions that make and remind loved ones that they're in your thoughts. The other part of the acronym, FIRST, offers some ideas about ma making relationships last. F is for friendship, I is for independence, R is for rapport, S is for sincerity, and T is for tolerance. Chart first.